Hi, I'm Won Hee from Samsung Mobile. This year, we launched Galaxy Watch 4, which runs on the new unified platform built jointly with Google. I'm excited to share with our developer community an overview on how to easily build your apps in this new watch ecosystem, as well as go over what specifically is different from the Android phone development platform. I will also share a few tips on what you'll want to pay attention to. Further, since we've been working very tightly with Google's engineering team for some time now, naturally, we have a special guest, Maya Conrado, a product manager from Google, who we'll hear from. So please stay tuned. Over the past few years, due to increasing users' interest in monitoring health and fitness, the smartwatch market has been rapidly growing. With this in mind, I'd like to point out that Galaxy watches are no longer a one-off device that developers have to pay special attention to. The user base has now grown to a substantial number, and efficiency has to be considered to help our dev ecosystem. Our developer community is cognizant of this rapid growth, and it's time for Samsung to help our dev partners with scalability to help them build better solutions and apps. In this light, fortunately, Galaxy Watch now runs on Wear OS, which of course is based on Android. Naturally, developers will be much more comfortable and familiar with Android-based concepts related to activities or services. So with the adoption to this unified platform, we'd like to strongly encourage developers to get started on immediately building apps based upon their familiarity with Android. Since its inception, how to make it easier for our developer community to build watch apps for this unified platform has been a foremost consideration for both Samsung and Google. From ease of build to market launch, we wanted to make the watch app development as simple as possible. Now you can build your watch app in the Android Studio. By providing watch emulators with rich features, developers can easily start implementing apps specific to this watch form factor. And now we have a new improved APIs over the previous Wear OS, which provides more diverse features. This will allow app developers to provide a wider range of services. On a very cool note, the implemented apps will be deployed via the Play Store and is enhanced to provide better exposure through the Watch Apps category. So now you can see that the unified platform, which Samsung and Google have jointly built actively supports watch app development. If so, what are some key points that developers need to keep in mind when developing watch apps? Unlike a mobile phone, the smaller sized watch form factor should be foremost kept in mind. This is a significant distinction. The watch needs to be able to clearly show users the information they wish for with maximum app performance along with the consideration for optimizing battery life. The apps that are developed shouldn't compromise this basic nature of watch devices. To accomplish this balancing act, let's find out what the new APIs are like and what improvements and development tools have been made for the watch. We also want to understand how the app distribution works. With that said, I'd like to introduce Maya Conrado, an expert at Google. Maya will provide the details we are all looking forward to hearing about. Take it away, Maya. Thanks, Wanhee. Hi, I'm Maya. I'm going to share what's new for the Wear OS platform, along with the opportunities this extends to developers. We'll be covering the basics of Wear OS services, our new Jetpack libraries, tools, and improvements we've made to app discovery. First, we'll touch on one of the basic concepts of Wear OS app development, the various surfaces that make up a full-fledged user experience. Complications and tiles provide predictable, glanceable access to information, while the overlay is well-suited for longer or more complex interactions. Our new APIs help you incorporate modern Android development into the creation of these surfaces. Now that you have an overview of the basic building blocks of a Wear app, let's talk about our new Jetpack APIs. These APIs can help you follow best practices, reduce boilerplate, and create performant, glanceable experiences for users. Many of our new Android X.Wear libraries have gotten updates. 
The final releases of the new Wear Remote Interactions and Phone Interactions libraries are now available. In addition, we've released new versions of the Wear Input and Wear libraries. The helper methods for phone interactions allow you to determine the type of phone a watch is paired with. The input APIs allow you to learn about what kinds of hardware buttons are available on the device. And finally, the remote interactions APIs help you open intents on other Android devices, such as opening the Play Store for a given app on another device. Over 80% of the top 1,000 apps are now written with Kotlin. You can use Kotlin with the new Wear APIs. We've also released the first set of Kotlin First APIs, rewritten from the ground up, like our watch faces, complications, and remote interactions APIs. Let's dive a little deeper into some of our new APIs. One available feature of Wear OS 3 is curved text. Allowing the Wear curved text view component and adding that into your app allows you to easily write curved text that follows the curvature of the largest circle that can be inscribed in a view. This allows you to create UI that is even more optimized for the watch form factor. We now recommend that all apps add the time to the top of their UI, which can be easily accomplished using curved text. We also have a sample available that can help you understand how to do this. Now let's take a closer look at the Tiles API. With the Tiles carousel just a swipe away, we've seen higher engagement with apps. The Tiles Jetpack library allows developers to create custom tiles for Wear OS devices. With our new platform updates, custom tiles are now available for Wear OS users to download. Let's dive into an example where we create a Hello World tile. First, extend the tile service and implement two methods, on tile request, where you define the layout of your tile, and on resources request, where you provide the resources for your tile. Let's look at a simple implementation of an on tile request. Within on tile request, the tile.builder does most of the work. Very important to building your tile is the timeline. Timelines allow the refresh of UI data in a battery efficient way. Let's take a closer look at the timeline. From the builder, we set one timeline entry. Then we set a layout. And finally, within that layout, we define our simple text, hello world. You can add images and more to this layout. We also provide a large number of layout containers for a simpler starting point as you design your tile. We're looking forward to seeing what you build with tiles. Next, let's take a look at the ongoing activity API. It's easy to switch back and forth between apps on the newest version of Wear. You can do this with the ongoing activity API, which is when an app continues to run in the background, even if the user navigates away. The new API helps users return to your app from other apps, the home screen and the global launcher. On the left, there is a small ongoing activity indicator at the bottom of the watch face. Users can click that from the watch face to return to the app. In the middle, you can return to your most recent apps by double pressing on the button. And on the right, ongoing activities are listed at the forefront of the recent apps, making it easy to find your most used apps. Let's take a look at some code. Attach an ongoing activity to your existing notifications. First, set ongoing to true in your notification. This means that there is a background task that is happening, like a workout running in the background or listening to music. Now, create an ongoing activity. Set a notification ID. Set icons that you want to display in the activity indicator, one animated one and another static one for ambient mode. Set a touch intent so that the user can re-enter your app and any status. Now, apply the context. The ongoing activity will be tied to the ongoing notification through the notification ID you set earlier. And that's it. To update the status, call the update method on the ongoing activity. We're also excited about the new health APIs we offer for high quality health and fitness experiences on Wear. Created in collaboration with Samsung, the APIs provide fitness and health data generated from sensors, contextually aware algorithms, and all-day health monitoring. These enable a simpler development experience. Now that we've walked through some of the new APIs, let's walk through the tools that are used to create great Wear apps. Android Studio can be used to develop your Wear apps. You can quickly create a new wearable project by using app templates. 
you can pair Wear emulators with your phone directly from Android Studio, allowing you to remain in the IDE while developing for Wear. And in Android Studio, you can now use an emulator for API Level 30, which allows you to test your apps on the new version of the Wear platform. You'll be able to test the new version of Wear even if you don't have a device. The emulator also has a virtual heart rate sensor, which means that you can create apps that respond to different heart rate levels. We know that engagement and discovery of apps is very important. We've made it easier to find Wear apps on your phone and to discover great watch faces. In the Play Store, users can now find recommendations in the Wear category and install apps to their watch from the mobile Play Store. We've also added a new app category to Google Play that allows users to browse specifically for watch faces. The Wear app ecosystem is growing. We're working with a number of developers to bring richer, more immersive app experiences to the platform. I'm very excited to introduce the new Wear OS platform to you. Now I will hand it back over to Wan He. Maya, thanks for sharing all that insightful and useful information. Developers, Maya covered a lot of content and the reasons for this new platform. I'm sure she covered many questions you may have been also thinking about as well. Additionally, there are two special tips I would like to share. First, you can test your apps on Watch 4 with Remote Test Lab on Samsung Developer site. This remotely connects to an actual Watch 4 device and gives you another option besides using the Watch emulator in Android Studio. Second, the watch can be difficult to debug with the cable on the phone. However, our unified platform provides a feature called the debuggable Wi-Fi. This will allow you to easily debug your watch app by utilizing this feature. Developers, I hope you feel empowered. I hope you're ready to start coding a fantastic apps to appeal to our extensive user base. A noteworthy point, the new Wear OS is based on Android R. So be sure to check the app development guide required for this version. You might also want to seek some helpful guidance by checking up on some blogs and community boards. One of the best out there is developerandroid.com slash wear, along with developersamsung.com to begin creating your amazing apps. In closing, thank you. And at Samsung, we are very excited to see your cool and amazing apps and services hit the market. I sincerely hope that you found this session beneficial. Thanks again.